On behalf of FDOT Project Managers Catalina Chacon and Ty Garner, welcome to the State Road A1A Resiliency Plan Public Meeting. During the meeting, you will learn about initial recommendations to make the State Road A1A corridor stronger and more resilient against storms and erosion for decades to come. Community involvement in this planning effort is encouraged and you will have multiple ways to share your comments and questions with the Resiliency Plan team. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing and will become part of the public meeting record. This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project web pages at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 452443-1 and www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 452444-1. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide a brief overview of why the State Road A1A Resiliency Plan Stripe Team was formed and to explain the process used to develop the Resiliency Plan. We will present the initial recommendations of the plan and provide an opportunity for you to provide input. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5077, or email melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us. That's M-E-L-I-S-S-A dot M-C-K-I-N-N-E-Y at D-O-T dot s-t-a-t-e dot f-l dot u-s. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Sewanee Street, mail station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 323-99-0450, by phone at 850-414-4742, or email at stefan.kulikowski at dot.state.fl.us. That's S-T-E-F-A-N dot K-U-L-A-K-O-W-S-K-I at D-O-T dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L dot U-S. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location on the project website and in the meeting notifications. In fall 2022, Volusia and Flagler counties experienced two large storms within just over a month of each other. The State Road A1A corridor was significantly affected by Hurricane Ian at the end of September and then damaged again by Hurricane Nicole in early November. Unfortunately, the damage last fall was not new to these coastal communities. Through the years, millions of dollars have been spent on emergency repairs to either reopen sections of State Road A1A or fortify the shoulders and dunes to keep the roadway from collapsing. This does not include the high cost to counties and cities to repair access points and walkovers and to the residents and businesses that experience loss whenever State Road A1A is compromised. Since Ian and Nicole, FDOT contractors have been working to make repairs in northern Volusia County and in Flagler County. So far, crews have placed more than 53,000 cubic yards of sand, more than 38,000 tons of rock, and completed roadway repairs in several locations. The cost for this effort is at $15 million and rising. 
In response, FDOT, the City of Flagler Beach, Flagler County, and Volusia County all decided to come together to form a State Road A1A Resiliency Strike Team in late 2022. Working with the Federal Highway Administration and regulatory agencies, the group was tasked with developing a long-term State Road A1A Resiliency Plan. The strike team focused not just on the roadway, but also the dunes and beaches. Specifically, the goal of the strike team was to find solutions that preserve the scenic vistas of this amazing state treasure for decades to come, preserve and protect the ability of State Road A1A to serve as a scenic transportation corridor for the local and state community, preserve the natural environmental benefits of this vital transportation corridor, improve public safety and create educational opportunities for the public, and provide opportunities to partner with coastal communities, local, state, and federal governmental entities to layer in additional protective measures. The Resiliency Plan focuses on a 13-mile stretch of State Road A1A from Roberta Road in Ormond-by-the-Sea in Volusia County to Osprey Drive in Flagler County. FDOT and its project consultant team relied on coastal engineers to survey the 13-mile corridor and determine the areas where State Road A1A is most vulnerable. The identified areas were from Aqua Vista Drive to Sunset Boulevard in Volusia County, from Sunrise Avenue to Via Madrid Drive in Volusia County, from one half mile north of High Bridge Road in Volusia County to South Central Avenue in Flagler County, and from South 28th Street to South 9th Street in Flagler Beach. While the strike team considered a number of options, there were four options that the team agreed would be viable to explore further. The first option was dune restoration or beach renourishment. Some benefits of dune restoration are, it provides a wide beach to act as a buffer against waves and surge. It is environmentally beneficial. It enhances wildlife habitat and promotes vegetation. And there are federal cost sharing possibilities. A potential disadvantage with dune restoration is that the level of dune protection may be compromised if multiple events occur close together and there is not enough time to adequately replace sand and vegetation. This method also does not offer a backstop for protection and it requires beach compatible sediment. A second option is granite revetment. The benefits of granite revetment are that it does provide shoreline protection if the rock is sized adequately. Granite revetment also offers some self-healing protection and it is highly durable. Some disadvantages of granite revetment are that it has a high environmental impact, especially to sea turtle nesting. This method also would reduce the usable beach width because of the large footprint and could affect beach access. Granite is also not as visually appealing as others and finding suitable granite that meets the color, weight, and structural soundness requirements may be difficult. Another option is a buried secant wall, which is what was constructed in Flagler Beach from North 18th Street to near Osprey Drive. After construction, the wall is covered with sand and vegetation. The pictures on the slide show the completed secant wall in Flagler Beach and the wall after the storms. While the piles were exposed, there was no threat to the roadway. The main benefit of a secant wall is that it provides a backstop to erosion, which enhances protection. Secant walls also have relatively low environmental impact and are suitable in areas with a shallow rock layer. This type of wall does not require anchor installation and it uses corrosion resistant materials that reduce maintenance costs. The disadvantage of a secant wall is that it is typically more complex to install and more costly than other walls because of the material. Finally, the fourth option is a buried sheet pile wall that is covered by sand and vegetation. Like a secant wall, the sheet pile wall provides a backstop to erosion, which increases protection and it has a relatively low environmental impact. The biggest disadvantage of a sheet pile wall is that it cannot be used in areas with a shallow rock layer or where there is a significant difference in elevation between the road and the beach. Both wall types may become exposed after large storms, so replacing sand and vegetation may be needed. As part of the resiliency plan effort, 
Members of the strike team held two community listening sessions in January, one in Volusia County and one in Flagler County. Attendees were able to learn about the four viable options, speak with project team members in an open house format, and provide comments. More than 100 written comments were received through the meetings. What the strike team heard was support for the Army Corps of Engineers project in Flagler Beach to move forward, find a lasting solution so that businesses and residents won't have to ensure future road closures and lengthy disruptive repairs the next time a large storm strikes, maintain the natural beauty of the corridor, do not do anything that will jeopardize the beaches and thus tourism, include sand and vegetation and make sure the plants are large enough to get established and withstand storm events, and provide more public walkovers, provide more pedestrian crossing locations, and lower speeds. In developing the recommendations, several factors were considered, including the effectiveness of protecting the roadway, maintenance needs such as periodic sand replacement, permitting requirements, aesthetics, cost and cost sharing possibilities, environmental and wildlife impacts, effects on recreational opportunities, resiliency, right-of-way needs, potential impacts to parking and public access, potential effect on water quality and construction duration. Because there are different conditions within the 13-mile corridor, the plan determined a combination of solutions are recommended. Now we will go over the initial recommendations in the plan. First, the plan recommends proceeding with the roughly 2.6-mile Federal Beach Renourishment Project planned by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers from South 28th Street to South 7th Street. There is a 50-year warranty with this effort, meaning the Army Corps would replace sand as needed. While the cost of the Federal Beach Renourishment Project is still being determined, Flagler County had previously estimated construction to be between $35 and $45 million. The Resiliency Plan recommends a buried wall along two of the most vulnerable areas. The first proposed wall location is in Volusia County from Sunrise Avenue to Marlin Drive, a distance of 1.28 miles. FDOT recommends a buried secant wall that will be covered by sand and vegetation. The second proposed wall location straddles the Volusia and Flagler County line. The 1.3 mile segment begins one half mile north of High Bridge Road and extends to South Central Avenue in Flagler County. A buried secant wall is also recommended at this location. At both locations, FDOT commits to replenishing sand and vegetation after large storm events if needed. While the cost of constructing the walls is still being determined, the preliminary estimate for both walls is about $100 million. The plan also recognizes Flagler County's non-federal beach renourishment project planned to the north and south of the Army Corps project. The estimated cost for the non-federal project has not been determined. The resiliency plan effort is part of concept development. The recommendations presented are initial proposals. FDOT and its partners are actively seeking funding to advance the projects to construction. One of the most important steps for the resiliency plan is to hear your feedback on these recommendations. There are many ways for you to share your questions and comments. The project team will consider all comments and all comments and questions are part of the public meeting record. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. Written comments may also be submitted on the project websites by going to www.cflroads.com and entering the project number 452443-1 or 452444-1 in the search box. You may also contact project manager Ty Garner directly by email at ty.garner at dot.state.fl.us. That's ty.garner at dot.state.fl.us. 
or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, DeLand, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5299 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com and search either 452-443-1 or 452-444-1 in the search box and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by March 31st. Have a good evening and please remember that safety is everyone's responsibility.